Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to the Gunlock here at Mark here with you beauties for another installment of our way too early preseason slash spring split power rankings going over to NA, the LCS this time, and with two less teams, we can fit this all in one episode. Yes, this might be uh, another one of the way too early power rankings. And yes, it is going to be a, a bite-sized version, an LCS bagel bites type of, of addition with the eight teams down from 10. It might be way too early, but it's going to get there a lot faster than you think. I think we're going to get this caught up with us around mid, late no January. We're going to be right into the swing of things. So you better believe that these power rankings important to get out of the gate so early. Eight? to one not sure what the format fully is going to be but it better not be all eight teams making playoffs <laughs> in the lcs but we start with the team that is oh so familiar with being in that bottom spot gg gone eg gone imt survive immortals in the eighth spot and the bottom two it's the theme of some korean imports that don't exactly scream hype both Castle and Mask, guys that have been on KT Challengers in the past. Castle's been there for almost three years now. Mask last played on Unicorns of Love Sexy Edition, the greatest esports game uh, name of all time. But I know we've seen Korean Challenger players come over and dominate, but I, I'm not sure I see it on this roster. I, I need to know, how, how does the regular Unicorns of Love edition change from the, the sexy edition? Uh, is was, this? There was a glow uh, up, man. A mystery that will never be solved. But the other mystery that has been solved is Immortals at the bottom of the LCS power rankings. There's enough here that I think someone crazy on the Hopium and maybe the one or two diehard Immortals fans out there could find a way to make an argument, make a case that this Immortal squad will be one that will find a way to be competitive. Ole coming back to the LCS has been someone, you know, he did his whole military service and then still found a way to rocket up those, uh, the Korean solo queue ladder. Comes back and very excited to see what he's going to be able to do. Tactical, it seems like he didn't want to come back to Immortals, but eventually does come back to Immortals. And, and then you probably sliding. saw what his other options were. That can be a, a healthy co contributor to that decision. And, and our Mayo coming in on over from the Evil Geniuses. Guy who did show that he's got something still to offer at that LCS level. But how far you're going to be able to take that still is also one of the questions that you look at him. Immortals, a team that you can find avenues to say maybe they can have a better shot. Maybe they're going to do something a little bit. But then as we start to talk about these other LCS teams, you're going to start to realize why a squad like Immortals is down at that eighth position. Even if the Korean imports come in and dominate, you feel like the other three members are guys we've seen a long time in the LCS, kind of know what their ceiling is, and they haven't reached that ceiling in a little while. That's why a squad like Dignitas is a spot ahead of them, because you... Remove the Korean imports. I know Rich has a lot of hype. Dove does not have a lot of hype. But they at least have some young players that are still a bit unproven in XU and even Tomo who played some games. But there's still, there's more potential with this dig roster because of the unproven young guns. Yeah, and that's really the one chip that is still providing that difference between talking about a squad like Immortals and a squad like Dignitas, where they find themselves for the LCS. Of course, having the bot lane was the one thing that we were waiting to figure out from Dignitas and seeing that's gonna be uh, Tomo and Isles is gonna be the extension. It's one of those ones where you can look at it and still say with Dignitas last year, you wanted to see a little bit more of Tomo. You think that there is more potential still to be discovered with this player. I, I would have liked to see Poom come back. I'll be the guy to say it. I think that he was certainly someone that still could have provided a little bit more at the LCS level. And where's Chime? Chime doesn't get a squad. You could put together a non, a team that doesn't have a roster. Licorice, Spica, Zven, Chime. Throw in a young player uh, in the mid lane from Academy and that's a top five team in the LCS. 
And I think when you look at this Dignitas roster as well, you can look at a player like Rich and think back to last year and look at some of the results he had. And this is a player that had his ups and downs. Make no mistake, there still were the ups for him last year in that summer split. And important that they're trying to dig more so into that as this Dignitas team. You're bringing in Dove. Not a lot of people seeing the positive of this import acquisition, the player that I think has had his fair share of struggles and especially fair share of struggles the past year, looking for that rebound rebound trip in the LCS. I don't know if this is going to be the ticket for it on this seventh in the power rankings Dignitas squad. Seventh can maybe knock on that door of six, but it feels like there's a bit of a gap between them and the shop of five rebellion in their inaugural year replacing TSM, we've talked about this roster a little bit, expecting Wild Turtle to get some starts, depending on how B-Boy performs. And, I mean, this team, you feel like six is maybe a low ball, but I, I don't know if there's much of a high ball. High ball might be five. <laughs> They're kind of locked in this be, five, six. I want to be conservative with Shopify Rebellion because I know I'm checking a lot of my bone biases looking at this group and wanting them to succeed, wanting them to do well, of course. The Sky's Coast angle going on with Shopify Rebellion, looking at some of these guys. Zazel looking up into the top side, talking about Mr. Fake God, getting their opportunities once again in the LCS. Big fan of these players and big fan of getting them another opportunity. Big fan of Mr. Insanity staying in that starting role for this team. It was something we talked about a lot when it was TSM with the spot. Now with Shopify Rebellion taking over and taking this first step as that LCS organization, having our domestic boy in that mid lane, another opportunity, another year to grow. Excited to see it. Now, ahead of them is actually the hardest team to grade, and that is 100 Thieves for me because why are they the hardest team? Well, it's... It's difficult because there's so many young players. Number one, there's so many question marks. Sniper, general sniper. We've been talking about this guy since he hit Challenger when he was like 13 years old, it feels like, and seeing what he's going to be capable of. Quid getting more of an opportunity, more time just being in North America. It felt like he was just thrown to the wolves immediately. So seeing him develop. And then Meech, another guy on this disguised Toast Challenger team who was maybe the most hyped up guy on this roster, but two completely unproven rookies on the squad and Quid who barely has like half a year of experience on the big stage under his belt. And let's just take a moment to take a check and realize what a drastic difference this is for 100 Thieves compared to where we were last year at this exact same time talking about it and realizing, you know, part of that landscape of the LCS, part of that is 100 Thieves themselves and their internal discussion on how they're, you know, uh, what their commitment is to the LCS and commitment to what they want to do and to achieve success. It is this young route. It is these, you know, lower down budget type of thing. But you look at a lot of these players, and I think there is reasons to have that hopium, to have them in a position like this and realize that this is a spot they can still grow from for the rest of the, you know, not just the spring split, but looking as well, the entirety of next year. This team, General Sniper in that top side, I want to make sure that it is known. There's no questions whether this guy can play, whether he's got the skills, whether he's got the mechanics to make a difference, to grow and be a star in this LCS. It's going to be about whether you handle everything else that comes with being a pro, the on stage, everything off stage, the practice, all these other little things, little factors that can play into making you not perform the way that you did rising up to this position. Those are the things that I want to see eased, checkmark, make sure we're seeing them go through on, on this first year for General Sniper. And dropping Golden Glue in as the head coach, I think is actually great for this squad because he, I mean, most of, if not all his coaching experience is with, first off, Meech on Disguised, but been dealing with the academy scene and a lot of these younger players. So bringing these rookies into the fold, Golden Glue seems like a great guy to get that first shot as a head coach. And honestly, the main reason I feel decent about putting 100 Thieves in that five spot is signing River to replace Closer straight up. That's an upgrade based on 2023. There were times in spring and summer that we were talking about River as the best jungler in the LCS. And Mark, he was in the MVP conversation for a little bit. Now, we've had a drop down 
since we've had that conversation in Rivers' performance. That is important to check in and, and you know, kind of reel yourself back a little bit. But you're right. Uh, this player at his very best can perform at that dominant level, can be that difference maker. And looking at the, you know, uh, 100 Thieves here and seeing Quid in the mid lane, that can be an avenue to help out a player, a young player like that, still trying to find himself, still trying to familiarize and get comfortable in this spot. Having a jungler like River, someone that is going to take the pressure off of you, making those plays first, making, the, you know, all those type of things, that is something that I think River can bring and really shine for this 100 Thieves roster. Now when we go into the top four, it's really time that we start looking at and talking. And, and you mentioned this. Once we change to eight teams, is the LCS still going to deserve four teams at Worlds? Because this is the category you're getting into at number four with Team Liquid, who I know just represented at Worlds. And if you're looking on the positive side of things, remember those first 20 minutes against T1, Mark. Oh, man. Good times. And that's just world champion T1 taken out yeah. Team Liquid. It was, of course, it was destined to go that type of way. Yes, it's, it is an important discussion. It's one that I think is a discussion that is immediately ended with, yeah, there's no way you can have four squads head over from the LCS when it is Half down. Half the league. To the eight total, it does not make sense. It does not work. Heck, maybe even sending three at this point seems tough with eight squads to go through. But the deal, that's the way it goes. And with Team Liquid as that fourth one, they'd be the one odd one looking out. TL reinvigorating, reworking the lineup here. Piosic out, Umpty in, Summit out. Mr. Impact back with the squad rejoining uh this organization and it is one of those ones where it feels just feels right having the impact here with team Liquid. and obviously he's going to be much more consistent than summit was in that top lane impact was the lone bright spot in the disaster year for FlyQuest throughout the majority of it so big signing to get him back umpty you've heard all about his communication his english is much better than po6 so he'll whether or not that was a main issue with the team, he's going to be involved with Impact Core JJ. Everyone's going to be able to communicate. And I am excited. I'm happy that they kept APA. I know this guy was getting flamed to oblivion at the World Championship. Didn't have a great showing. But guys, he didn't even play a full split before he's going to the World Championship. And if you're not willing to actually invest, develop, and give time to this young talent, if you're expecting them in half a split to all of a sudden be competing with Faker and the best teams in the world, like, don't be ridiculous. Give the guy time to grow. Give him time not to be a Ziggs one trick summit. Come on, that's what we gotta be going with, with your boy APA. Yes, Team Liquid, they ace it. They get the check mark. They are bringing him back for this year for the real kind of rookie year, it seems, is the way you would be going with a player like APA. It would be, it'd be criminal not to get this type of opportunity. So that's gotta be one of the big things that you're looking at at this one for Team Liquid. It is that full year run. Fingers crossed, everything goes right for Mr. APA in the starting role for the team and what he can grow. For me, though, it's less about that and where the success is going to come from this team because I think I've got a lot of confidence that he is going to continue to grow. He's going to be good. I can even look at Umpty coming over and exchange, you know, to trading places with Piosic, Impact coming in to replace Summit. That's the, an upgrade for me looking at this for Team Liquid. It all won't matter. If the bottom lane of Jan and Core JJ don't improve from last year and take some serious steps to being a top tier bottom lane in the LCS, I think that is going to be a requirement for this Team Liquid team to, to punch any higher than this fourth spot in the power rankings. If the EMEA and LEC is your main jam, then you're a fan of number three on this list because FlyQuest has all three, only three European imports in the lcs i know jensen is no longer taking up an import slot but whippo inspired and jensen all here on FlyQuest. obviously there's a lot of question marks with this team whippo hasn't played in a year is jensen actually washed up was it a bit of a dig effect he was still the bright spot in a lot of these dig games and then masu Rookie coming in, Busio still unproven, uh, but the potential for Masu and Busio is honestly the second best bot lane in the LCS. I truly think that they could reach, they're not touching Berserker and Vulcan, but top two for them and inspired the last time we saw him 
He was basically the best jungler in the LCS. Oh my God. I, I can't tell you how happy Jensen is about this type of situation. He's, you gotta be over the moon knowing that you're gonna be playing with someone like Inspired and the type of job that he can do in the jungle. We've already seen it here in North America. MVP caliber level of performance that he can dish out. Really expecting that one with this FlyQuest team because he can get creative with it. Knowing you got someone like Whippo up in the top lane. Yes, Whippo returning to the professional stage. This is one where I think there can be some type of question about what level of performance that we're gonna get in the first week or two type of situation. I don't think there's any question in my mind the type of player and, and impact that someone like Whippo can bring to a squad like this FlyQuest team, the creativity that he is gonna bring and how he approaches the game, the champions, everything else is gonna be an additional factor for it. One of these ones you look at with FlyQuest, one of the big rumors that's come out, they wanted to swing for the fences and bring LS back to coach this squad. And that is, for me, a type of indication of where they want to go, how experimental they want to be, how much they want to push the established norms of what you do in League of Legends. I think this squad is going to be pushing that pace in the LCS. I mean, we know LS's boys with Whippo, one of his OG fans. And the reason I'm feeling good about this team is both Whippo and Inspired. You're telling me they're not going to be an extra level of motivated, determined to showcase that they deserve to be LCS starters and deserve to be in the conversation for some of the best in the league? The, the extra motivation after a year off is why I'm feeling extra good about the boys at Fly. Now we get into that top two area and listen, the champs from the summer split, the only Western team to make it to top eight. We got to put the respect on energy only change is who he coming in for Ignar, which on paper, I think most people, us included, you're saying that's an upgrade. Even with a little bit of a rough uh, performance from Mr. Huhi at the, the, they didn't really get two worlds. Come on, we got to be careful. With we got a five game one. sample size to look at. Yeah, how we're wording that one in this situation. Not enough from him. But yes, he is coming over. And yes, I think it is very fair to say, on paper, this should be an upgrade. This should be more consistent for this NRG squad. It's going to be interesting to see how the, you know, um, how the how the pair down in the bottom lane of him and FBI are going to develop that chemistry is going to be the thing that you're looking for. The synergy Played together before. Them. Exactly. That's got to be the other thing that you're bringing back up. Those good old 100 Thieves, good old Golden Guardians days. These two have certainly played together. And then you're bringing in the rest of the crew that is these returning LCS champions, the guys that did beat G2, made their way to the top eight at the World Finals. Absolutely. Got lots of love for this squad, and I think this is still one of those ones where they're going to take their lessons, take the things that they realize they ran up short at this world's run, and hopefully improve. Work on that. Keep that in mind as they go through this spring split. The, the main question is just going to be, how do you fare now? You're not the dark horse that, nobody, that everybody's sleeping on and maybe not respecting. You're the defending champs who made top eight at Worlds. Everyone's eyes are on you. Nobody's going to be underestimating this squad anymore. So let's see how the likes of Palafox contracts Dokla deal with, you know, being in that pressure and having expectations coming into the year. They still don't have expectations nearly as high as the number one team on this list. I know NRG beat them in finals. They did better at Worlds, but no team in the LCS and no team other than T1 had a better off season than Cloud9 because they directly upgrade their two weakest positions and going from the last form we saw out of Jimenez to Jojo is maybe the biggest individual upgrade in the entire LCS this off season. Do you hear that? Oh, oh, do you hear that? That is the sound of those squeaky Crocs making their way across the LCS stage in a Cloud9 jersey. Mr. Jojo Pian, welcome on in. Vulcan, welcome back to the Cloud9 family. And C9, welcome back to the top spot of the LCS power rankings. There's nowhere else that this squad could go when it's assembled like this as you laid out. You can start with Zven down in the bottom lane. I think you're going to get a little bit more consistency and a little bit more pop-off from a guy like Vulcan stepping into that bottom lane. It's going to be very interesting to see how he combines with Mr. Berserker, what they can dial it up 
in the bottom lane is something I really want to be seeing. But the big story, of course, is Jojo Pyeon in the mid lane. Instantly, mega upgrade over Amenas, even upgrade over Amenas when Amenas was playing at his best for Cloud9. What Jojo Pyeon brings the champion pool, that just... He's got that dog in him, man. That's the only way you can describe that type of attitude coming through from the young Canadian. He's got the spice and he's only gonna accelerate the biggest fan base already in the LCS in Cloud9. We've touched on this a bit, but very curious to see how the play style for Cloud9 changes this year from last year, because we saw, especially towards the end, Jimenez playing supportive mid laners, not getting a ton of resources or attention. That ain't how JoJo's playing. He's gonna smash lane, Blabber's gonna be spending a lot of time, so we're gonna have to see the transition from Fudge to playing more weak side in that top lane, which we saw him slowly adapting to towards uh, the end uh, of the year on Cloud9 as well, and he's done it in years past, but it's gonna be a very different play style out of the C9 squad. And a lot of people are gonna be looking, of course, at JoJo Pyun, at Vulcan in the bottom lane, the two new additions, but you better believe there's going to be a lot of attention on Mr. Fudge because that was certainly a point that a lot of people had questions of him returning to that top lane role for Cloud9 after they didn't find the success that I think a lot of people felt they should have been able to find last year. So looking at him individually, a player that needs to provide not just at the domestic level, but internationally. So it's all going to be about Cloud9 taking care of that business domestically to make sure they're getting there internationally before we can answer those questions. And... The expectations are sky high. I don't know if there's been a better roster on paper in the LCS than I remember since like peak TSM 2017, 2016. It's really hard to find it. And really when you are going back to some of those ones, you're looking at some of the, the championship pedigree as your reason to validate that roster at that type of level. You can kind of do that with this Cloud9 team, not necessarily to the same degree, that you could have with some of those past LCS rosters. But yes, no mistake, the expectations, the pressure, it's gonna all be there because this is all there for this team to take. The way that they are lined up, the way that they've got the skill, any day it should be. You got your you know, average up, they got their average up, it's gonna be cloud nine. You gotta see how this one goes. I know it feels like the dark days, but there's still positives to be found in the LCS. Look no further than C9 at the top of the table. But that's it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.